Hello and welcome back. That was so unprofessional that I decided to do something I don't usually do, which is we start the recording all together. You know, after playing two, I got this much to say. Two really, really raises the bar in 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 strange ways. So, episode two does everything that I, I expect like a, a Doom episode to do, which is it just goes, okay, you played this game. How about how about we stop pretending? Because the second one might you'll 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 know when we get there, but let me just say this. Um, episode two is pretty different too, for the most part. That being said, the first episode does eventually get like like it gets gets a nice nice pinch down. But uh, two is where I started to, to rack up some conventional deaths. Also the shot bow will sometimes up close deliver instant kills, but don't rely on it. Your enemy might still get a shot off. I've also turned on a little bit of auto aim. Because I just cannot land shots without it. I really like the enemies. So far, a lot of the enemies have, have struck me as like, this is nice. This is neat. This is neat. This, this makes me go, ooh. Uh, and me going, ooh, is a good thing. At least in general. Um, oh, yeah. I completely forgot about this part. I don't like that. I really don't like. So there's a, a few different variants of those uh, bold guys. Oh, there's a button here. This weapon's nice. Um, it is a projectile based weapon, but it's really nice nonetheless. You'll, you'll get to see why it's nice in a bit when I start using it. Yeah, this thing can mow down. Possibly not as good as the, the hit scan, uh, little uh, plasma like weapons can do. Those really can just mow things down. But yes, uh, this eventually goes to space. Even though it's recommended you generally don't go to space on your first big outing, but. Uh, anyway, this game did not care. They also didn't care about not making instant death pits all over the place, and they did that too, a lot. So for the other people who made this. Uh, they have their own unique little philosophy on how games are supposed to be. Which is fine by me. How is that? Because it's yellow? Because it eventually establishes like a language. So there's a language in in how uh, elevators work. Yellow ones you can activate. Uh, yellow ones you can activate. Red ones will go down when you step on them. Purple ones go up when you step on them. Uh, which in some cases is used to kind of communicate this elevator will eventually become an elevator, but not right now. And that's really nice. Like I'm surprised I don't see that more often. Like the establishment of a of, a, of an internal language. Scratch my head. Just the mistake I made. I use that water effect a lot, like uh, even even in the in the, the the later stages of episode two. It's like hey, you could just stop doing that, no one would care, but they still do it anyway. Dream stays alive. Here's something weird. 
that I don't fully understand, but for some reason it really likes the idea of you being able to pick up crates. And then opening passages with them. I don't know why. Uh, you can pick up basically any kind of crate. There's later another type of crate. We can pick that one up too. Okay, I hope you're ready for one of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. Let's see if you can guess why this enemy fucking sucks. If you guess because he flies, the answer is correct. Luckily, there's a few weapons we'll get later that um, can pretty much instant kill them. backtrack that much. That lever, by the way, that's over there um, activates the uh, respawns of crates. This one actually does a lot with respawning items and tools, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, we did a quick one. A far time of... Hmm. So that went pretty fast, but um, I'm not going to do much at this next level. Um, oh. And there's a reason for that. And that this level's kind of neat. It does a lot of fun stuff. See so yeah, next time, um, up shape creep. <laughs>